my kind of town Chicago is my kind of town Chicago is it's first in any race and just in case it's like Mario's place ladies and gentlemen I'd like to welcome my next guest Sammy Khan if I were to give this man a title it would be Dean of American music Sammy has probably written more popular songs than any man alive. The man is a triple threat. Not only is he a great composer and lyricist, but he's a dynamic performer. Sammy Khan, please, welcome to Mario's Place. Mario, first of all, I can't tell you how pleased I am to be sitting opposite you because you're a part of my anecdotes in my life. Do you remember how we met? Sammy, can I ever forget? Can I well, ever forget? Well, can I tell the people how we met? Sammy, please. I have a lovely home in Beverly Hills, and like all lovely homes, it has flaws. I had a leaking roof in Beverly Hills, and a friend of mine said, I know a chap who can fix your roof. I said, please tell him to come over. A very young, lovely-looking, handsome man, looks a little like you, <laughs> came to the house, he went up on the roof, and he fixed the roof. I had to borrow a ladder. However you did it. He then came up to me and I said, what do I owe you? He said, nothing. I said, nothing? What do you mean I owe you nothing? He said, well, you can pay me. I said, how can I pay you? He said, listen to me sing. Really listen to you sing? Now here's a fellow who's been up on the roof for uh, an hour. And it was very, very warm that day. And here he is in my living room saying he wants to sing. I said, where's your pianist? He said, I don't need a pianist. I said, well, what are you going to sing? He said, I sing like Lanza. I looked at this chap. You sing like Mario Lanza? Now, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I have been in a room with Mario Lanza, and it is an awesome experience. To see and hear Mario Lanza in person is frightening. And here's this young fellow saying to me, I sing like Mario Lanza. So I went to the piano and I hit. And he started to sing. Which, do you do that still? Sam, <laughs> I first saw you reaching for the phone. I didn't know if you were going to call the police. <laughs> no, you know who I was going to call after you sang. <laughs> I called Johnny Costin, as a matter of fact, and I said, Johnny, I think I have a story that would be very, very interesting on your show. And I begged him and pleaded with him to put our friend here on the show, and I would tell the story and he would sing. But Mr. Costin was in one of his, shall we say, negative moods, and we never did that experience, but I have heard you sing, and you're extraordinary. Sammy. I was so frightened when I had first met you to come off that roof. And by the way, Sammy, is the roof still leaking? No, it isn't. You do great work as a roofer. I was pounding on the roof, Sam. I didn't have any tools, but I had to. I wanted to meet you so much because of uh, the songs that you have written for not only Lanza, but for the greatest. And when a friend of mine told me that a fellow that when I was singing at the Horn in Santa Monica said to me, you'll never believe who I delivered me to today. Ha! Sammy Khan, I said, well, please get me in there. He said, what can you do? I said, I, I, I'll do anything. He says, you know, his roof is leaking. I said, I know a little bit about roofs. Let me ask you a question. Would you be honest with me? <laughs> Did you put the leak in the roof? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember you sitting at that piano. I was just in awe. Believe me, Sam. And it took everything I could to get up enough nerve to you, ask you. I've told more people the story of the singer on the roof. You've heard of the fiddler on the roof? You're the singer on the roof in my life. Sam, you have written so many popular songs, and I, I understand that many people would probably ask you the same question. Do you really have a favorite uh, I've known you've written for Sinatra, for Doris Day, for uh, so many of the greats. My favorite song? Well, I have too many songs to have a, one favorite, but I have many favorites. And I told my children, when anyone asks them what their father did, you say, my father was a lyric writer. And if they ask you to prove it, you tell them this lyric. <laughs> Throwing under P 
dependable too Do my foolish alibis bore you? Well, I'm not too clever, I just adore you Call me unpredictable Tell me I'm impractical Rainbows I'm inclined to pursue Sam, was that written for Frank oh, Sinatra? No, it wasn't. It was written for Fred Astaire, would you believe? Oh, my. Fred Astaire sang it? No, that's the other part of the story. Fred Astaire didn't sing it. It was written for Fred Astaire, and that was the greatest thrill of my life. If you ask me who is the one person in the world I wanted to write songs for, Fred Astaire. He didn't sing. Uh, no. Well, he, no, he did better than sing. He did the song. He was, you know, you know the songs? Well, I'm, I mean, I, he did sing, but... No, no, let me tell you something. I'm the vice president of ASCAP. I'm the president of the Songwriters Hall of Fame. And I tell you, the, the number one seller of songs was Fred Astaire. Unbelievable. Gershwin, Kern, Cole Porter, everyone wrote for Fred Astaire. He was, and there I was, I was going to write for Fred Astaire. This is really new to me, Sam. I'm I telling you. I thought it would be Sinatra. No, or well, George well, Sinatra. I, I didn't have to worry about Sinatra. I had Sinatra. You understand? But Fred Astaire? And he never sang the song because he was preempted by MGM Studios and went to do silk stockings with Sid Charisse. Can you imagine? He preferred Sid Charisse to me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't understand why. No, no, I can't either. <laughs> but uh, with, with some of the experience, uh, is uh, Mr. Sinatra uh, an easy or difficult man to work He's with? He's a very, very, very easy man. As a matter of fact, you know, he listens to songs. When you're playing songs to him, he sits there like this with his thumb on his lower lip. And he needs his lower lip. And when you finish singing a song to him, he looks up and goes, that's all. Just? No, just a nod. But let me tell you something else. I wouldn't stand in front of him if I knew that the song was, no. If I stand in front of him, he knows that I know. And one of the first songs I wrote for him for films was The Phone Rings, which comes first, the words of the music? The phone call. The phone call. Yeah, and there is Sinatra saying, Sam, we're doing a film called The Tender Trap. Now, when I hear the word trap, I hear the word snap, and the song's written, seriously. Jack Benny, the late Jack Benny, said to me one day, how did you write a song called The Tender Trap? He thought that was a miracle. But that song, like most of my songs, they write themselves the songs. You see a pair of laughing eyes And suddenly you're sighing sighs You're thinking nothing's wrong You string along, boy, then snap Are those eyes, are those sighs They're part of the tender trap And ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back after this message. <laughs> 